Matt. Uh, so you are one of the co-founders of Bioptimizer and the author of this great new book, uh, The Ultimate uh, Nutrition Bible, that I'm really looking forward to talking to you about. Um, so welcome to Modern Health Span, and thank you so much for joining us today. No, it's great to be here. And, you know, one of my, well, my number one goal right now for me personally is maximizing health span, lifespan. So really excited to dive into that topic. Okay, excellent. Thank you. And I mean, one of the key messages of the book, so I really, I really enjoyed the book. Uh, one of the key messages is, you know, you can have any kind of diet. And I love the way that you kind of you and Wade have like completely different diets. And yet, you're both doing really well, really fit mm -hmm. and, um, and muscly. So it, you know, it just shows that it's possible, right? Like, that, yeah. you, know, you, you could, I don't know if you could do it on the Twinkie diet, but. Um, you lose okay. weight on the Twinkie diet though. <laughs> yes, I, that that's kind of amazing. Um, okay, so, I mean, you have such a set of an experience in both health, nutrition and the mm -hmm. supplement space. So if we kind of, to, to set the scene, uh, could you give a little bit of your background in, in kind of what, what is the key experience which led you to write this book? Because it, it's a, you know, it's like 500 page book that there's a lot of information in it. Yeah, that was a three year mission. It was a, right. the most ambitious endeavor I've ever done. Yeah, a little bit of background. I'd say, you know, the two impactful experiences or three impactful experiences I had as a teenager that got me on this journey. One was my grandfather being hit by a car, it was a hit and run, broke his hip. And then to, to see his health progressively decline and he moved in with us. So the last five years of his life, he was living in our home and he was literally praying for death. He was in so much pain and the painkillers weren't working. And just seeing the health span crash going from a healthy 75 year old man to just passing away a few years later. So that was very impactful. Then I went to the beach one day and I saw two jacked bodybuilders and I felt weak and feeble. Then I decided to go to the gym and start building muscle mass. And the third one was helping my best friend lose 191 pounds in 18 months, I was 19 at the time. So I decided to make a career out of helping people live better, healthier lives. Went to the University of Moncton in New Brunswick, Canada and got my degree in kinesiology and science of physical activity. And then I started training people. So I was training people like 80 hours a week on the East Coast, built, I think, the first successful personal training company, worked with a couple of pro athletes at that time, and then moved to Vancouver. Wade was living there. We struck up a friendship, and we were both two of the most successful trainers on the West Coast. And then we decided in 2004, hey, let's launch a company together. He was winning national natural bodybuilding championships as a vegetarian 20 years ago. I thought, well, that's really weird. And I think it's weird enough that we can market it and get it, grab attention. And sure enough, we did. At that time, we were focused on natural bodybuilding. So we had a course called Freaky Big Naturally. And in 2005, we built our first supplement called Masszymes. And it's still our second best selling product today. And I think in terms of even from an anti-aging perspective, I think enzymes are highly underrated for a lot of reasons we can get into. And then in 2014, we rebranded to Bioptimizers, which is you know, biological optimization, which is really where our passion is, our hearts are, and what we want to help the world become. And you know, part of the reason we wrote the book is we argued for a very long time. I was a ketogenic zealot. I started doing ketogenic diets 30 plus years ago. Wade's been vegetarian for 20 plus years. And we were both passionate about these nutritional philosophies, and we argued and we were both really successful with ourselves and with our clients for the most part, but sometimes a ketogenic diet wouldn't work. I remember one client was having digestive issues, another client, his skin turned gray and he did not look healthy. So those failures were indications that it wasn't for everyone. And then we started finding common ground, what we call universal nutritional optimizers. And in the book, more on the back, you know, the last quarter of the book, it's all different things that anyone can apply, whether it's nutrigenomics or optimizing your gut health or optimizing your micronutrients. And regardless of if you're ketogenic or a vegan or a paleo, or if it fits your macros, those universal nutritional optimizers 
can help people improve their health. So anyways, that's a bit of a long-winded answer, but we just felt that no one had really written a truly unbiased, scientifically based nutrition book or not at the level that we've done. And we're really proud of it. Right. Yeah. It, it, it has so much information and I, it, it goes way beyond nutrition because it's got like exercise plans and also talks about the genetics. And so uh, that's, yeah, I really like that, that it's kind of all encompassing. When we are young, late nights, and minimal sleep seem to be no problem at all. But when we get older, they have a big drain on our energy and mental focus. Now my wife and I prioritize sleep like never before. And I found magnesium breakthrough very helpful for this. Especially during busy times, it helps me drift off faster, keeps my sleep quality top notch. Unlike other magnesium supplements that might be giving you one or two forms of magnesium, Magnesium Breakthrough contains all seven forms of magnesium designed to calm your mind and help you fall asleep, stay asleep and wake up refreshed. Both my wife and I are happy to take Magnesium Breakthrough as part of our sleep routine. Support your mind and body with this all-natural, gluten-free, soy-free, lactose-free, full-spectrum magnesium supplement. Simply go to bioptimizers.com modern and use promo code MODERN10 during your checkout to save 10%. Thank you for your support. One, one of the things is there's lots of diets around at the moment. They do tend to be a bit religious. People have very strong opinions about those. So why yeah. do most of them fail? Why do it? So you said like 97% of diets fail. Correct. Why, why do we think that is? Yeah, there's a lot of reasons. Um, and again, let's, let's define failure. So there's the weight mm. loss failures, which again is 97%. Only 3% of people make it. And then I think there's people that have different other objectives, whether it's being healthier or building muscle mass or whatever the specific objective is, and they just quit. And I would, I would say, you know, one of the core reasons across the board is that they're not creating a diet that's aligned with their psychology and aligned with their emotions. And we have a whole chapter on, on the psychological nature of things. And the more you can you know, create a diet that you just feel good about, like you feel good about it before you even start, like it's attractive and the way you structure things is attractive, the more likely you, you are to succeed with it. You know, one of the things we talk about in the book is, is something called discipline styles. So people have different discipline styles. And, you know, one of the things that's different about Wade and I, in terms of compliance, is Wade loves a contrarian objective like the the more contrarian it is the more excited he is to prove to himself and to others that it's possible and i think that was a big motivator for him to do vegetarian bodybuilding 20 years ago and for me i'm more scientifically driven so i need all of the scientific nuances to feel comfortable to feel confident so those are just some of the examples but in terms of weight loss, I think one of the biggest reasons is people diet too fast, too hard, too fast. And one of the things that we really highlight in the book, and, and I think we can't overemphasize it, is the starvation survival mechanisms that everyone has. And when you diet too hard, too fast, those will kick in. And what happens is your leptin will drop, your ghrelin and NPY, which is a will make you insatiable, will increase your testosterone, will drop, especially if you're a male. You'll lose lean body mass. It's just a long list of effects that kick in that make it almost impossible not to start eating more. You know, you're, you're basically fighting millions of years of, of evolution. So when you're fighting millions of years of evolution, it's yeah, again, human nature has a, or humans have a limited amount of willpower that they can use to win against those battles. And I think the 3% that have been successful over time, let's just call them the most, you know, disciplined, driven sliver of the population. They just have above, above average drive, above average willpower. And what we want to do is, you know, how can we create something where everyone can win and everyone can succeed. And I think in order to do that, you have to hit all sides of the diamond. You have to 
focus on the psychology, clear the emotional issues, stack all the odds in your favor, pick a diet that works for you, and then make the proper adjustments over time. So I, again, we wish it was a simple, all you got to do is that type of approach. But we've seen over the last few decades that that just doesn't work. And Wade has arrived. Yeah. Hi, Wade. Af uh, morning, yeah. afternoon. Yeah, it's, it's, apologize for being late. I got caught up in another podcast and then LA yeah. traffic the way back. So it got so <laughs> exciting. They extended way past our time frame, and then boom. So okay. my apologies. Okay, no problem. Uh, this is Richard from Modern Health Span. Pleased to meet you. Um, okay. Yeah, no, that's good. It's like, uh, yeah, a diet is is like a dog, right? It's for life. It's not for Christmas um, or, or for a short period of time. Okay, so in the book, you do talk about um, like five kind of key goals that you would aim for within the diet. Mm -hmm. like, uh, so building lean muscle, uh, getting rid of excess fat, uh, maximizing athletic performance, optimizing mental performance, and maximizing health span. So kind of today, what I'd like, you know, the audience, my audience is mostly focused on health span. That is the thing. But I think that, you know, like lean muscle mass and excess fat are particularly are related to that. And of course, cognitive performance uh, always remains key. Um, so I, I guess that's kind of the focus I would like to think about. Um, so I'm taking, I've got the book, 500 pages. I need, I want to think about my diet. Right. So I wanted to kind of build myself a diet and um, I don't know, I'm 50s or so. And I, I want to get bigger. And I want to get rid of some fat. What are the key things? What are the key decisions that I need to make when I'm thinking about my diet? Yeah, Wade, maybe talk about the, just the basics of bodybuilding nutrition. Yeah. So first and foremost, and we a lot of we've thrown the baby out with the bathwater in regards to bodybuilding and fitness competitors. They have mastered the art of losing body fat and maintaining muscle mass. And both of those are indicators for longevity. In other words, more muscle increases the quality of life and the reduction of, you know, life-changing injuries like falling and breaking a hip or something like that. If you look at the life expectancy on that. The other thing is all of the associated diseases array around obesity. All of those have been solved in the fitness industry 50 years ago. So there's no mysteries there. And those are key elements for living long and living strong. The reality is, is so many people have got focused on the inaccuracies of calories in and calories out. So calories in, calories out is relative if you are addressing metabolism which is something that diminishes over time as a tendency as we age. And that's largely in part because we lose muscle mass and increase fat and don't adjust our calories concordantly or our activity levels. So depending on our age, so if you're getting to the, like in a perfect world, here's what a person would do. They would get as much muscle mass in the first 20, 30 years of their life when their hormone or up to the 40, when their hormones are optimal. They would switch into cardiovascular training to improve oxygen carrying capacity to the brain to maintain their cognitive health and their cardiovascular health. And then, and the last part of their life, they would reduce any of the high impact, high risk activity with long-term sustainable industry and calorie, a, a, a extremely nutrient dense diet with a low amount of calories. That would be the perfect world. Most people have gotten to this taste and they're not in a perfect world. They're not a competitive fitness addict. Like they're not a bodybuilder they're, but they throw all those principles out because they say, well, I'm not that. I don't want to look like Mr. Olympia or Miss Olympia. I get that, but let's extract the principles and apply them to you right now. So if you take a person, let's say they're my age, they haven't worked out that much. They want to live long. They've looked, the first start, they want to look at what's their, you do a genetic test. What are the things that are likely going to take you out? So for me, it's cardiovascular risk, right? I have a suboptimal genes around cardiovascular. The second thing is I have suboptimal genes around blood sugar metabolism. So I need to eat high protein, consistent meals over a period of time. I went to a plant-based diet because it has better profiles from cardiovascular health. And I increased 
my cardiovascular training, which I was all about muscle building, body fed, like working out weights in the gym. So that's what I did as a middle-aged person. It's no different for anyone that hasn't worked out. Okay, what's the, let's say they have suboptimal genes for thyroid and maybe they have a, a, a suboptimal genes for cognitive decline. Okay, and you can test this very quickly. Okay, great, what do we need to do? Well, I would say, and, and they're, you know, 10% over their ideal body fat. In other words, instead of being at 20%, they're at 30% or 35%. So let's get into uh, a sensible three times a week muscle building program that has a little bit of zone two cardio, you know, that's done afterwards for 30 minutes after that's going to increase their cardiovascular. No heavy impact. You're on machines under a guided system. You're looking at your nutrients. So you're looking at a diet that's going to be more supportive. Some people are more on the ketogenic side. Some people are more on the carbohydrate side. So Matt and I are great examples. He does really well in ketogenic. I do really good on plant-based. Okay. So you, you take that into effect and then you look at, okay, I have trouble methylating maybe this vitamin or this mineral, which is contributing to my cognitive decline or heart disease or whatever that risk factor is. Now I'm targeting supplements and activities that might be brain training, neurofeedback training to increase cognitive function. I might want to be really concentrating on cardiovascular health, like maybe going out for a walk twice a day to and make sure I'm getting lots of blood flow to my brain. I might be using certain nootropics to enhance, maybe I have a subpar serotonin system. So taking something like, you know, mental reboot in the middle of the afternoons when I get a little confused or foggy could be very helpful for me as I age. You know, so those are components that we can implement into the system. And you want to choose the foods that's right based on your genetic proclivities while avoiding the triggering the points that would activate a suboptimal gene. So your genes are only are, are not one of the things we talk about in the book is your genes aren't a death sentence. They're basically you can turn on and turn off suboptimal expression, like, you know, optimal expressions that turn off suboptimal through diet, training, nutrition, and biological optimization technology. So you want to have a wide strategic event and looking at you individually and what's the things that are going to take you out and avoid those things first. And then you want to take and, and integrate the things that are going to make work for you to summarize. Right. I just want to, we, we covered a lot of ground there and I just wanted to kind of highlight some of the just the muscle building basics because you know one of the things for a lot of people that are hyper focused on longevity a lot of people are doing a lot of fasting and what happens especially with intermittent fasting is you have a lot less mTOR activation throughout the day and if your goal if your primary goal for us a year two years three years is to build that precious lean body mass that can serve you for the rest of your life we recommend you know three to four protein feedings a day, ideally with at least three grams of leucine per serving, so that you get that mTOR activation and you have you spend more time in an anabolic environment throughout the day. And I think a lot of people are over fasting, losing lean body mass, forget even building it. And I think you know we need to balance spending time in anabolism. And in, 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 in autophagy, if you're in autophagy all the time, you're going to become catabolic at a certain point and start losing muscle mass and potentially have other health issues. So we're big fans of like cycling, you know, cycling periods where, hey, let's build lean body mass for a few weeks and then let's diet for a few weeks. Anytime you're dieting, if you're in a calorie deficit, autophagy is going to be quite high. 